has Mission Shakti strengthened India's overall security? Absolutely. And uh, I think it's right to recall what US President Roosevelt said. Speak softly, but carry the big stick. And also Voltaire, a French writer, said, God is on the side of the big battalions. So you cannot leave it to providence uh, that uh, when the time comes, somebody will save us. When so many of your strategic uh, systems depend on satellites now. Your complete financial transaction, your credit card transactions, your communications, your media, TV broadcasts. And of course, as Dr. Saraswat brought out, all the military network centric systems, even the uh, nuclear weapons command and control depend on satellites. So what are you to do if the adversary has the capability to knock down your satellites? You have to have a defensive system. Yes. And although we have uh, displayed uh, the capability to defend our satellites, these are also the basis of uh, getting offensive capability, although it has not been overtly stated as so. But our major concern is China. They also have said that they are against militarization of space, but internally they have been working on all offensive capabilities. Yes. This year alone in January, the US Defense Intelligence Agency report on Chinese capabilities said that they are even they even now have military units training on anti-satellite missiles. Uh, they are developing, uh, they have gone beyond having this uh, anti-satellite missile. They, they are developing satellites which are going to go into space and going to be stationed next to other satellites. When the time comes, these satellites can act against those other satellites. They have the capability and developing more with robotic arms to go and inspect satellites, to refuel satellites, to repair satellites. The same system can actually nudge a satellite out of orbit or damage the other satellite. Mm. So many satellite killing applications are now coming up. This is our first step. I'm sure there are other uh, developments in progress, but we cannot sit back and uh, depend on good luck that our systems will work when militarization of space takes place. One concern that's constantly been raised ever since the test has been successfully conducted is why now? What was the need to conduct the test for India at the moment currently? Okay. Uh, see, there are some treaties in place which we also observe. We have ratified the Outer Space Treaty of 1967, which talks about not deploying any weapons of mass destruction in place. Uh, there is the Ballistic Missile uh, Treaty, there is the uh, Missile Technology Control Regime. We are adhering to all these treaties. But you know, when new treaties, when new uh, rules for implementation are discussed, only the pioneers of those technologies who have the knowledge, who have the capability in such uh, operations are called on the table. Hmm. So we are part of the four major nations of the world who now have this technology. Yes. Discussions are already going on about, uh, uh, about the Outer Space Treaty and further what will, what will be implemented. So India will now have a say in whatever is decided in the future. Uh, remember, uh, we are taking part in the Antarctica expeditions because for the same reason uh, we are counted amongst the explorers who have been to Antarctica and have a permanent station there. Yes. Similarly, uh, there are many other treaties. Uh, there's another one uh, concerning uh, uh, mining in the depths of the oceans for, uh, uh, what do you call it, uh, rare, rare minerals, underwater. Uh, so, unless you show that kind of capability and say you are also a player who must have a say, you are not going to be called, you are going to be ignored. Hmm. Uh, so I think that is one of the reasons why it has been done now. Uh, otherwise, you know, like uh, uh, America may, may attain certain uh, critical capabilities and exclude everybody else. It's like creating a no-go zone. Hmm. They might say, Ki, look, we have done this. We are going, what has China done in the South China Sea? 
they have created artificial islands and yes. said this is our territory you will not come here yes but they must have the capability to back it right now they don't have full spectrum capability for that mm -hmm. let me also come to dr saraswath had very finely explained about the ballistic missile defense uh, i just want to remind everybody in 1998 when we went nuclear after that drdo started working on the uh, the components of affecting the no first use policy hmm. which means the warhead must be protected the delivery means must be protected and the command and control system must be protected uh, unless you survive a first attack you cannot carry out uh, you know a strike on the Certainly. enemy so this ballistic missile defense was a part of that strategy to survive a nuclear attack on yourself hmm. and defeat enemy's ballistic missiles coming at you but when it comes to command and control it was about protecting all the links the transmission which was also through satellites for the nuclear uh, command structure so a country which does not have the capability to knock off a satellite say pakistan hmm. is going to target your communication links trying yes. to jam the satellites trying to spoof the satellites hmm. and then if this doesn't work your no, no first use policy is of no use certainly so uh, when the when the bmd system was developed we attained this uh, uh, capability the next logical step was then to carry out anti satellite uh defense is there fear of a you know space war being triggered among other well, countries surely in the world? surely you know this uh, this was as you may call it a peaceful test mm. a defensive test we used our own missile to carry out a kinetic kill with no explosive yes. so although it was against our own satellite but the idea is that you should shoot down or neutralize a rogue enemy satellite, enemy satellite yeah. but what prevents the adversaries to use explosives to destroy not one but number of satellites it may cause some problem to them but well calculated and well placed an explosion in a certain orbit can destroy many satellites and not affect your own satellites i think this is only the beginning we should start if not militarization i would say we should start looking at defensive measures against such type of adventures hmm. we have to protect our satellites as i said in the beginning it will lead to the country going back 50 years if you know our satellites are destroyed because we are becoming more and more dependent for for everything on satellites hmm. so i would say this is the beginning only well we're talking about space warfare exercise this is entirely a new domain and this is going to be the first simulated exercise to be conducted by india what is the significance and what exactly are we talking about here okay uh see the essence of warfare <laughs> remains knowledge of the terrain and use of the terrain effectively not only that we must have battlefield transparency and situational awareness amongst all the forces that is being achieved today increasingly through tools deployed in space of course in the air as well but many of the sensors the communications the imagery the networking uh, is coming in real time from our satellites and other assets now when so much depends on space based assets mm -hmm. we must ensure denial free access to these systems mm -hmm. otherwise if the enemy is able to deny you access to them you are going to be blind on earth as compared to your adversaries now today fortunately we have a number of assets mm -hmm. being operated separately by the army navy and air force and jointly as well shared as well so we have the resat series of uh, satellites the mm -hmm. cartosat and and many other also uh, many satellites to be launched this year as well as next year they are planned okay now when everybody army navy air force was controlling their own and so much of commonality that need was felt and it has been fulfilled by having the government sanctioning the 
national uh, that the defense space agency mm -hmm. the tri service uh, agency yes the mm -hmm. tri service uh, defense space agency this was sanctioned last year mm -hmm. uh, and also to support it is the defense space research organization the dsa will remain the parent agency and the D dsro will support this now this is a new enterprise mm -hmm. our Anti-satellite capability is baby steps. Many other forms of warfare in space are being developed, whether kinetic or non-kinetic. Mm -hmm. These people, like the Defense Space Agency, headed by an air marshal and with 200 people provided, and its components remain with the Air Force, the Army and the Air Force, they need to formulate some okay. kind of strategy, protocols, procedures. They need to know the capabilities. They need to know the gaps in their capabilities. They need to understand technology, how it is impacting warfare, what are the requirements, what does the enemy have, what the enemy can do. Mm -hmm. So unless all this is done, they will not be able to formulate a policy and the way ahead even for the a defense space research organization as to what is required to be done. Mm -hmm. So this exercise is an exploratory exercise and I can tell you I have been head of the Red Forces branch in Army Training Command which essentially means whenever you have a war game you have blue forces and you have red forces. My branch used to provide the red forces. So in these exercises uh, scenarios are war gamed. Mm -hmm. What the enemy has what he will have in the future, what he can do in what time frame, okay. how you can react, how you can protect, who is responsible to protect and who is responsible to actually defeat mm -hmm. uh, the threat to those assets. Okay. So this is the genesis of uh, the exercise. But uh, we, have, we have to be careful. It's not all about space warfare. Uh -huh. There are many other aspects to it uh, which will be exercised and they will formulate. How do you see the roadmap from here onwards? <clears throat> what I see is we are already following the American model. Mm -hmm. They have a space command which they established in 1985, then it went defunct in 2002. After the 9-11 attack, their priorities changed. They went more towards missile defense rather than space command. And then it was reactivated and last year um, US President Donald Trump ordered that Space Command be made an independent combat command, the 11th command in the U.S. Armed Forces, others being the U.S. Uh, uh, Air Space Command, the U.S. Uh, uh, missile and uh, uh, missile defense. Uh, there are 10 other uh, combatant commands, combat command. So this is the 11th. But don't forget. They also have a space development agency on whose lines we are now establishing the Defense Space Research Organization. But they also have, because they have many more assets, they are nothing in compared to them. They also have uh, the US Air Force Combat Command, which includes uh, space wings, space aggressor squadrons. So they have these, they have been provided with these means which we have just tested mm -hmm. as anti-satellite weapons. Not only anti-satellite weapon, they have other means which are non-kinetic, uh, they are electronic means, soft kills through radio frequency jammers, lasers, high power microwaves, uh, they have uh, other electronic measures to disable enemy satellites. Not mm -hmm. only that, to protect their own satellites also and space-based assets many of them which are not even declared. Uh, these are the components, the units, which their space command will coordinate and command and direct. Mm -hmm. So we have started on that model. We have merged the defense imagery processing, uh, DIPAC processing and analysis center. Mm -hmm. We have merged the uh, satellite, uh, what's it called, uh, satellite, uh, we had in Bhopal. Uh, yeah, had there is a, a control center, center in Bhopal as well. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So we have merged these. We have we, the the space cell of the Indian Air Force has grown into the command. The the space cells of the other two services are also now 
uh, merged into it. Mm -hmm. Although the Army, Navy, Air Force will continue with their operations, with their satellites, but they will now be subject to control by the Defence Space Command. Okay. Now, uh, they will coordinate, they will control, they will lay down policy, procedures, protocols, and after this exercise, mm -hmm. uh, the way forward will be determined. How this exercise will be done is very interesting. Okay. It's not a one-day exercise, it's going to be over a few weeks. There would be subgroups formed, the objectives would have been laid down, these subgroups will go into, they will be given tasks, they will, there will be red forces also mm -hmm. uh, representing the Chinese and their assets who will make presentations as to what they can do, mm -hmm. what kind of damage they can cause in what time frame. There will be other subgroups on technology, on defense, on um, offensive action, on uh, you know what needs to be developed. So they will all come together, make presentations, discuss and there will be a jury then who will uh, give their decisions and the recommendations will be made which will over the next okay. one or two years be followed up. Some will be implemented, some will not be implemented. We are going through an evolution. Okay. But overall, overall frame is what has been borrowed from the American organization and procedures.